Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Organium's Puzzle Box. In today's video I'm doing one for a request for uh, one of my subscribers called Jason. He's given me his uh, high poly and low poly mesh for me to try and resolve some of the issues that he's had with some texture scenes. Uh, he's also got a bit of an issue when it comes to UV islands but that's very common for when you've started off in 3D modeling because so many things for you to understand. I don't know all of them, nobody probably knows all of them, but there are definitely some good practices out there to be done. So I'm going to go for some of those as well, but I'm also going to show you how to fix issues such as seams and so on. So if you guys have any other you know, requests, you've got your own projects that you want me to help with, they, there's a, an email in the description below that can help you. Just send them over to me, tell me what you need, and I'll try and help you guys out. But in the meantime, let's just begin with this tutorial and go through some of the issues that he's had and how to resolve them. So let's begin. So this is where we have the two meshes. We've got the high poly and the low poly that Jason has provided. With the high poly, you can see where he's tried to merge the head with the body, just because there's a different level of um, uh, polygons on the head and a different level of polygons on the body. And this is where he's also done the board and arms. Now these areas, they actually show up um, in the bake when you do it. I mean, I'm 100% def sure that this will show up in the bake over here. The, the arm seems to be, seems to have been done definitely better from that point of view. What I would have done here, I would have done a remesh. Uh, I know it may cause for you to lose the detail, but then do you probably use something like zero mesh or something like that to re apologize this before proceeding with sculpting. Because there are just too many issues uh, with it, in the sense of um, just just di well, dynamic has probably been used somewhere in the process, and then decimate has been applied to this. And as you can see, the decimation has probably been a bit too rough as well, because the settings on it has caused these areas to show up, show these um, you know parts around here, you know the, these um, sort of uh, areas that might might look like skin imperfections, but they're actually just more like um, polygon imperfections so that can be that can be resolved as I've said by doing a zero mesh and then sculpting once you have a good uh, uh, spread between all the polygons on the mesh so with that said let's have a look at the UVs of the low poly mesh um, opening this over here will show us that um, we've got te the textile density per island is not maximized so what I mean by this is that the, the face, for example, the head is probably the most important part of all of this. Um, and it's got probably one of the smaller size, the smallest amounts in the, uh, the UV square. And since generally for human characters, the face is the most important, you may want to have this far bigger. So what you would do here is you'd scale this up um, over and then make sure the other parts in here are taking less space. Like for example, maybe Boots, the underside of the boots, which is this area right here, and also these two parts. So these are the uh, body parts. I would definitely separate them right here or, or somewhere towards the back so that at that point, again, these can be scaled individually rather than spread across a stretch like this over here. Uh, but you know, one thing, let, let's just um, let's just have a look. One thing that you could do is you can go into your materials. And let's say this is the body material. I feel, I'm not sure how you know. Obviously, other softwares deal with this differently, but you could have another material, and then we can call this head, right? And then at that point, we come in here and we select the head, and we assign it to this material. Now, already, obviously, the colors have changed a bit because the body has a different kind of material compared to the head. But it doesn't really matter now. The head itself is going to be, it should, it should be on its own sort of UV island, uh, sorry, UV square. It doesn't matter that it shows up with the same sort of part in here, that's not important. When you can then come in here and pack the island, it really occupies as much space on, on this as possible. Uh, potentially, you may bring something else on the head, there's still some space over here that you can use, but for our intended purposes, uh, let's just select the head and hide it and then select all of these parts and again pack islands or uh, well I'm, I'm trying to sort of average them a bit but as you can see 
you could probably make some money with it pretty good as well. Um, but yeah, it's so it's really up to you. Um, so what, what I would do, for example, I would take the arms and probably increase their size a little bit. And you can do this um, by obviously just scaling them up and then moving them around. I'm not sure what that little part is in there. I, I hate when Blender just selects randomly polygons. But yeah, so you could probably do something like this, you know, have the arms bigger, but now they're getting a lot more Textile density on them compared to the body, so that's something for you to take into account. Um, so there's so much, so much potential with uh, with this patch in here, um, in the sense of there's so much uh, still to do on making the UVs a lot more um, organized and to have a lot more texture quality. But anyway, you can see what I've done there. I'm just going to um, export this mesh over into Substance Painter and then we can have a look at how we can resolve scenes and how we can res you know, try and resolve the neck area where we've got, where we're definitely gonna, from the big, we're definitely gonna have this sort of issue here. Um, and then I'll show you how to merge the two materials together. Although they're on two different materials, it doesn't mean they can be seamless either. So let's have a look how we do that. Okay, so in Substance Painter, we will um, select new and then bring our edit that we've just done and we bring it over into the end. Right, already you can see we've got a body and we've got a head mesh which is very important because obviously this will help us with having a lot more textile density on the face where we're probably going to want to have more detail. After this is done we can go in here and do a fade. So I'm just going to do the normal map but whatever I'm going to do here applies to every other map as well. So we'll do a 4K, load up the, um, the high poly, and then let's just bake selected textures and see how it comes out. It should be okay. Um, and if you look here, we've got no seams around the, the arms or the legs or anything like that on the bake, but we do have seams over here. Uh, obviously, the, I mean, these are not seams, these are just the high poly um, area where we've got those um, you know, that, that problem for when, when it was merged, when they were merged together. But I must, you know, you, you will definitely notice that the issues that we've got uh, from the high poly are transferred to the low poly. And you've also got these areas where you can see how um, there's been a bit of a problem with the nose and so on. Normally, what you'd want to do there is you want to have a look in the, in the bait mesh maps and have a look at the frontal and rear distance and these might actually be a problem. Now, I, I'll be honest with you guys, I generally just wing it with the details in here and just bake until I get some better results. Um, and that doesn't mean, you know what I mean, just play with the settings and you can see that it actually got worse than what it was. Um, so I, I, just, I just play with the details until I try and get a, a better result. So maybe, you know, probably go for 0.002 or something like that you know um, trying trying to find the right setting that will make this a little bit better in here um, and as you can see 0.002 did give us a better result so I'm just gonna go with that for now um, with that done you can see we've got some other issues on the body which is a bit unfortunate but actually you can go in here and bake textures, bake mesh maps, and you've obviously got the option to bake a uh, body or bake a head. The, so, so at this point, we're just going to bake the body itself, and we're going to do that at 0 0.01, um, and that will all obviously fix the problem that we've had on the body itself. Uh, pressing OK, you can see that now the body is OK and the head is OK because we baked these separately. And it's quite easy to just bake. When, when you want to do the bake just for one area, just select the, the texture, texture set list that you want to bake, which is quite straightforward. Okay, so with that done, uh, let's bring in a material. So I'm just going to bring a human skin material um, on the head. And you can see that's how it looks like. And then I'm just going to add the same human skin material on the body as well. Now, clearly there's a difference between the arms, between the body, between the head, and that's textile density for you. Uh, like I've said to you guys, very important to 
do this properly. Now, one thing you can also do, let's add a fill layer. And then with this fill layer, add a, um, a generator. I believe that was, that's how it's done. And then just change it to a UV checker. Yeah, that's the, that's the way. And if we move this over to the head as well, now you can see the texture density. So what you'd really want to do here is ensure that the arm texture density and the body are pretty much the same. And you can do this in your 3D software of choice where you try and map out the UVs. And then the head, obviously, like I said to you guys, you've got a lot more detail on it. So this is why of your it looks different. Uh, you can see the, you know, the, the, the checkboard shows that we don't have a lot of stretching going on, which is quite good. Uh, but what, what, uh, what's important here is that you probably will cover this in some way. So the difference between the quality of the head and the body, it really all depends on how you're going to work your mesh. But let's just hide this layer that we've added. And now uh, bring the human skin above. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click the... Um, so, so what I want to do is I want to merge these two together. I want to link these together in some way. And there is a nice and neat way to do that in Substance Painter as well. So merging these is quite easy. Um, you right click the layer. And then you've got this option here where it says Instance Across Texture Set. You select that and then you obviously make sure that both of these are selected and then press OK. And now we've got this over here where it's an instance. And the nice thing about this is that it now, if you do any changes to this one, to this particular section, well, sorry, to this section, it will change on the whole mesh. The change that the triplanar, for example, will sort of try and maintain the same quality throughout. Um, but we'll just leave it the UV projection for now because I want to show you guys. So still with the head selected, I'm going to control C, control V, this section, um, and I'm going to put it above because I want it to be above what we call it. But now, you've got to look at the map that it's using. So it's using a color uh, roughness and height. So we're going to change this over here to height, the, the height information, and then we're going to change that to replace. With that done, we're going to change this particular mesh, uh, sorry, layer to, uh, the layer to try playing the projection. And now you can see not a lot is actually happening and we need to understand where are the seams coming from. So we clearly got some seams on the body and uh, obviously they're not on the head, but that's fine. We'll just, well, for now, for the time being, we'll just leave it as it is right for now. With this duplicated, we're going to right click it, add a black mask, and then with a the black mask, right click it and add a generate generator select it and then go to UV board okay and you can see it's already done something over here but it doesn't quite work because the body hasn't had the same change so we right click this and again we instance across the material and press ok now you can see that the um, issues that we've had okay, are gone with the seams um, if you look on the actual layer itself, on the sorry, on the UV board distance, you do have this slider which allows you to select how how much of this. Is. So if I if I actually if I disable this texture, um, just disable it over here as well. Um, oh, I seem I seem to have uh, activated the uh, this UV checker. So if you have a look over here. Uh, you can see where the UV border is doing its work. So that's what it's doing. It's applying a triplanar for the mesh over there. And obviously that is now replacing any issues that we've had uh, between the two meshes. So that's a nice way of dealing with this problem. Yeah, you can still see a bit of a seam right here and that can be resolved as well. Uh, so this is another method. By the way, I don't know if this skin is really actually matching on the head. You might want to use something else or, you know, go into the actual um, skin over here and you may want to rotate this. It really depends. I mean, it really depends on what the... <laughs> actually, I've just realized I've used a human nose top skin, which is why this is not really working very well. Uh, you may want to have a look over here and see what kind of um, skin you want to use or have your own skin you know it, it's just uh, i can i can then draw i can drag and drop this over here and that will change the skin you know this is something else but again this doesn't look very right so you've really got to find this skin
skin type that would best work for your character or as I've said make your own skin uh, but it, the nice thing about this is it obviously changes across the whole mesh now because you've done this uh, setting now what we're going to do again with the head selected that's fine um, sorry with the body we're trying to pick the body here so with the body selected we will add another paint layer on top and then I want the height and roughness and base color to be passed through um, and this is because only these two layers are active within our scene right now so I've changed that to pass through and then I'm going to change this to clone tool press V on the keyboard keep it pressed and select an area of your mesh like here and now paint that in and you know with any luck we should be able to get rid of the seam over here um, obviously you can see that you can easily break it if you're not too careful and this is where the topology is sort of uh, you know showing its ugly head uh, because it's not um, conveying this nicely now depending on how you do here you know you, you may want to look at what kind of a, what kind of a, a, a brush you're using so you may want to change the parameters and make sure that you're sort of um, well you want to make sure that your mesh is being as smooth sorry your your strokes are being as smooth as possible otherwise they just cause these sort of wrinkles around here so yeah you want to you want to paint around it so that you get to fix it it's not going to be perfect but still definitely not less noticeable the only reason why this seam is a bit noticeable still is mainly because we've got this um, such a, such a there's, there's, there's nothing going on with the skin. There's nothing, nothing specific like no dirt marks or anything like that that will blend a bit more. Um, okay, so that's for that sort of area. We can now have a look at fixing, try and fix this uh, sort of line here a little bit. Uh, so we'll see how we can do that. So now with the body, with the head, sorry, selected, we can create a new fill layer. And with this fill layer, uh, we only need to be affecting the normal, so not, not anything else, just normal. And over in the normal tab, we want to search for normal map. And this is the normal map of the head, you can see it, just select that and it will just reapply the normal map of the head. Then you want to add a paint layer on top. And again, this paint layer should only be affecting the normal map. And we want to change from no, we want to change from normal to normal, and make sure you're in paint mode. And now you can see you can actually paint in here, and this will change the normal map information a little bit. Uh, let me just try and see. See if you do that, it will just paint with the normal itself. So that's not right. Um, what you want to do is you can change the color tone of the normal map, which will then either add more normal map information or less so it's a bit of a tricky one but in essence you're trying to hide the normal map information that you have here unfortunately um, it really all depends on what the sort of level is the, the, you know, the level of your, of your problem so in this particular case we obviously got quite a bit of a problem um, to try and fix this that the shade of this is so important uh, for the normal to disappear but all in all you would just be able to cover this up with more like a texture rather than, than this but this is a sort of a way of trying to delete the normal map information it's not perfect and if you guys have a better idea at this please let me know I'm interested in that as well uh, normal map editing in, a, in previous versions of Substance Painter you were able to, to do this a bit easier uh, I'm not sure why now it doesn't fully replace it it used to fully replace it but yeah so uh, just, let's just have a look at the before and after. So this is now, and this is how it was. Yeah. Well, yeah, um, I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. Please let me know if you have any questions. And if you want more uh, information like this in the future, and if you want more opinions, uh, just drop uh, an email in the link, uh, you know, on, the, on my address below, and I'll try and help you guys out. And if you have any requests as well, let me know, and I'll see what I can do to um, fix these issues for you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.